This video is sponsored by Bandai Namco Entertainment for Sword Art Online Memory Defrag for iOS and Android. I'd like to thank them for supporting the channel. Sword Art Online is kind of the anime of the decade. Debuting in 2012, it's since become one of the most valuable properties for any company that has any sort of stake in the series. And it all started with a camp. It's not unusual for staff to get together in some way to bond during pre-production, but most of the stories you hear about are somewhere relevant, like how the Golden Kamui staff went to Hokkaido. The SAO team went to an island somewhere. During this camp, the two chief animation directors, producer and director, discussed their approach and designed the look of Sword Art Online. The two people that took charge of the action sequences for Sword Art Online Season 1 were Ryuta Yanagi and Takahiro Shikama. Director Tomohikyo Ito is not an animator and doesn't know many animators to begin with. He's a director and storyboard artist focused on finding ways to tell a story, so the visual elements are closer to the action director's styles than the preferences of Ito as the series director. For example, Ryuta Yanagi is very talented and versatile when it comes to the different types of effects animation, particularly in regards to fire, so that helps shape what would become Become Sword Art Online action. But Sword Art Online 2 changed things. There was still sword fighting, especially in the second half, but the core of Gungair Online is, well, guns. So things started shuffling. The chief producer of SAO, Nobuhiro Osawa, felt it was weird that nobody on staff had fired a real gun before. So he contacted author Keiichi Sigsawa due to having worked together on the Kino's Journey anime and asked for some tips. And Sigsawa essentially said, Pack your bags boys, let's go to Guam and shoot some guns. Giving everyone just that bit of essential experience animating the weaponry. For the second series, Shikama was replaced as action director by Tetsuya Takeuchi, who introduced another different approach as someone incredibly skilled with both action and character acting. Meaning that the ways in which the characters move whilst fighting are the emphasis rather than the attacks themselves. He even animated some of the show's best shots himself, like this one from the opening of Season 2. But Ordinal Scale was another venture entirely, and acted as a celebration of Sword Art Online, with all previous action directors taking part in some way. The result is not only my favourite entry into Sword Art Online, but also an homage to the entire series thus far. In the credits, Tomohiko Ito gave special thanks to all of the screenwriters that he's worked with since starting on the series, and an iconic scene from one of the best animators in the industry, Nozomu Abe, pays homage to each and every story arc within the anime. So, what now? Right now, Sword Art Online Alternative is airing with an entirely new staff at Studio 3 Hertz, while Sword Art Online Season 3 will be proceeding with Manabu Ono taking the role of director later this year. But aside from the anime, there's been new game versions entering the mix, such as Sword Art Online Memory Defrag, which echoes the visual styles throughout the anime's history whilst adding some fun flavours to it. Like American Kirito here, who is depicted with a background of hot dogs and burgers. Thanks for watching the Kenpo Effects, and thanks to Bandai Namco Entertainment for sponsoring this video. As a part of that, here are a couple minutes of gameplay where I play through some of the stages in Sword Art Online Memory Defrag. Hello, this is the part of the video where I try and let's play, even though I've never let's played before, um, as a part of the Sword Art Online video. So I'm actually going to remove my face here because. That's incredibly off-putting, just staring at your own face whilst playing a game. I know that, because this is my second time trying to record this. So, I'm just going to jump in to what I thought was quite cool. It's called, it's called the Weekly Anime Digest, and it's for um, SAO GGO, which is currently airing. Now, what I think is, because it's got five hours left, this, we, this they do this every single week that they make a game version of the currently airing anime. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a friend who's around my level. I'll, find, I'll go with this person who will aid me in this battle. So I'm going to give myself an XP boost as well. And I guess we'll depart with my teams of two Kirito, one Leafa, and one blue Asuna. Yo. So basically what this does 
is it recaps like kind of the latest episode of the show, which I think is actually quite cool. It's really interesting as someone who's interested in um, marketing of uh, anime and video games and those sort of things. Having like the two kind of reflect each other in this way is quite cool. Ora. Skip through this. <laughs> that is just essentially a game version of the recap. Episode 5.5. So, we're going up against Lynn. And she is absolutely destroying me. So I can switch between characters to use her attacks. That time I just jumped into one of her attacks though. So let's try and. Oh no, I can't believe it. I never, okay, first I never promised I was good at this game. Maybe I should have put that at the start of the video. We have no guarantee of expert gameplay. So bring out American Kirito with his hot dogs and hamburgers. And there, we took, him, we took Len down. Genuinely feel quite guilty about that. No, don't congratulate me. I, I feel terrible. Poor Len. So, got an S rank on that. I was a bit over leveled for it, but. Got me through it anyway. I can follow this person. Actually, maybe I'll do that. I'll follow that person so I can remember to uh, bring them onto my party again. They're kind of good level for what I want. Like, they're not going to overshadow me, but then they're not totally useless either. Got some coal. Well, I'm going to continue, and I'll tune this video out.